Last year, I had the privilege of following Paul around at every major tournament for the year. I learned some really cool things, specifically during his warm-up process. And funny enough, this idea was already mentioned on the internet by Paul in this video right here. The infamous field work video. But I'm here to focus on this one thing that he says during the video that is way more important to his routine than I had initially thought. So right now, all my discs are still out there. What I'm gonna do is set my bag in a spot and because it was a warm up, I don't have to throw them as hard as I can back to get back to this point because I wasn't ripping them super hard out there. All right, so here's the scenario. It's before a tournament, Paul goes out and throws his bag. He then goes to each disc and throws smoothly back to his bag, usually within circle one, many times hitting his bag directly. Now, what does this do for Paul? This reinforces what discs he should be throwing at specific distances. So I thought to myself, huh, I wonder what it would be like to be able to implement this into my own game. So in order to do this, I have a couple thoughts. But first, let's head out to the field. All right, so field work. What is it that I learned from Paul? What is it that we are going to implement into our field work today? Number one, we're gonna find our smooth distance. And number two, we're going to record on our phones what our smooth distances are. How are we gonna do this? Great question. That leads us into this video sponsor, Rogue Iron. We've got their range finder. I've been using this range finder for about a month and a half now. And here are the things that I absolutely love about this range finder. Number one, it is, let me show you, this is honestly the best part. It is, hopefully you can see, it's rechargeable with USB-C. Some of you guys already know that's like a massive thing. So one thing I don't like about other range finders that I'm not going to mention is that they take those stupid little circle batteries, which nobody likes. Nobody likes having to change batteries. Just we all have a USB-C charger at home already and you just plug it in, charge it up. Another thing that I love about this rangefinder is this cool case that it comes with. The reason I like it so much is you can either zip it, this thing's all locked up, or here's how I usually use it. I clip it to my bag, which it comes with its own little carabiner like this. Clip it to my bag and you just use this little bungee. See that? See what I just did there? Bungee for quick access to your rangefinder. Boom. Quick access, put it back bungee no need for a zipper i want this thing quick so let me show you how i set up on my bag i just clip it on this little clippy clip with the little get over there and then it's just super easily accessible whenever i want i just pop a little thing open it up grab it use it put it back put the swirly mcgirt look i'm doing this one-handed just did that one-handed so go check out rogue irons range finders on their website we got a link here and we got links down below in the little section below the video. Be sure to check them out and let them know we sent you. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna get my warm up on. I'm gonna speed through it and then we're gonna get our smooth distances locked in. All right, warm up's over. I'm gonna pick these up and then I'm gonna record my smooth distances, lock them in on my phone. Starting off with my putter. My butter putter, the altar. Yeah, that's smooth. Started off on the right foot. Oh my goodness, 282. I think that's pretty far. How far does the glitch go, you might ask? Good question. How far does this overthrow disc off triple foiled stamp glitch go? Guess we're gonna find out together. Probably less far. Yeah, I'd say distance wise that's that's smooth. 294 for the glitch. Not bad. Next in the lineup, we got the proxy. Ah, nice flight. 282 for the proxy. Zone. Should be way shorter. Way shorter. 218 for the zone. Next, we got the captain suspect. Ah, uh, it's further. The thing's uh, it's beating in a little bit. I say it's probably 240. 250 for the captain suspect. We'll do Lozado first. 
was a bit high, but we'll measure it. I like it. Lozado 307, nice. Next, Pathfinder. Yeah, I'm all right with that. We're off to see the Pathfinder, the wonderful Pathfinder. Okay, Pathfinder, 331 feet. The very stable Prodigy A3. This thing does not like to fly, so we'll see where it ends up. 294, that's what we like. Next, we got the Servo. Dang it. I say dang it because it was smooth, but a bit hard and a bit high, but that should be right around where it would have landed. Servo 394. Next, Sapphire, stable Sapphire. Let's get it. Yeah, it's exactly a smooth Sapphire throw. Love it. 392 for the Sapphire. Athana, Athana. That should be fine. Just a bit left, wow. Relax now. I'm not trying to throw you that far. Okay, Athena, 400 feet. Next, we got a motion. Okay, relax, you're not supposed to go that far, man. Okay, that went about as far as I wanted. All right, 350 for the motion. We've got the splice, and you already know how this goes. Two hundred. <laughs> yep, two thirty-four for the splice. All right, next is my flippy grace. I hope I throw it on the right amount of hyzer. Survey says that I threw it a bit high, but it's flippy, so it's gonna be all right. Yeah, uh, you know I'm gonna do both graces at once. Come on, nice and smooth. That's better. All right, first gray is 395. Second gray, oh my goodness, 459. Um, wow, that's kind of nuts. Next, we've got the construct. Respectable, 360. Next, we've got the Gould, the Castaplast, the Plat, the Castaplast. That's better. Whoa, definitely get the distance on that. A little bit hyzer, not a full flight. Gold, 415, that's tracking. Silver, lat, rive. That'll do. Let's go in 410 for the ride. We got the salt by Clash. That's it. That'll do it. The salt at 410. Similar to my ride. Last one, Ballista Pro. Yep, that'll do. Nice and stable. We got 380 for the Ballista Pro. Cool. All right, guys, we've got the numbers. You definitely could have done all of that all in one go. I did it one at a time so that if I needed to rethrow one, and I don't know, it just it was not the most efficient thing for me to do it that way. Throw all of your shots, laser back to your bag, make sure your shots were well thrown so that when you reference on your little notes how far you threw, you understand, okay, on a good line, a smooth, good line, I throw this disc X feet far. Let's head to a course and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I thought we'd come out here to a course, put this in action. We've got Sandusky hole two. 
I'm gonna range find, see how far it is, but it says 229. We'll see if that's legit or not. Yep, that seems about right. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna look at my list that I created earlier. And honestly, we're gonna have to really power down on this hole. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of math here, but closest thing I could throw looks like is a zone at 218. That was my smooth distance from earlier. So I'll pull out the zone and see how it goes. Perfect. All right, so that worked out. This is pretty much parked. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this hole out and we'll head to the next example. We got hole seven at Sandusky, 360 feet. Let's take a look and see. So similar to Disc Golf Valley, I would look at a hole like this. I would say, okay, slightly uphill. I'd play this as if I was taking off about 30 feet from my shot, just from the slight uphill. So let's just say it says 360. I want something in the range that goes a little further than 360. So I'm gonna be looking at my Athena, which I got out to 400. And I can tell you that actually tracks for what I typically throw here. So that's interesting. It looks like I know my bag decently well kind of going into this, but some of you guys out there might not. Anyways, I'm gonna throw the Athena. Hopefully I get close. You know, I think that was uh, that was pretty decent. Let's check it out and see. I think I, I might've been a little short, but this is a good throw. All right, not too bad. A little bit more height, like I was saying, and uh, I'm liking it. So let's wrap this one up with a good old putt. And that'll wrap things up. All right, guys, all that to say, Paul McBeth, after being his videographer for a year, I picked up that small little thought in my head Maybe I should go out and figure out what my smooth distances are because I see Paul just nice and loose, warming up, throwing his shots, and then nice and loose, throwing his shots back to his bag. So visually, he's picking up on how far his discs fly on smooth lines, right? Not when he's absolutely trying to crank on it. Of course, he does practice that, but for the first 30 minutes, he's just throwing everything smooth. And I'll never forget how he would land most of his discs inside that circle one when throwing his discs back to the back. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, we've got these Rogue Iron range finders. Link again here or here, I forget, but definitely down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. A more consistent shot. And it worked. I want my mids to go up to 300. About knowing your discs, which version of me is what throwing the disc, you know? Counter.